Hello, welcome to day one of our Ellie and Mac Duchess coat sew along. Whew, I'm excited about this one. I have admired the Duchess coat for a very, very, very long time and um, have always been super intimidated for it from by it for some reason. Um, I don't know why, because getting into the pattern, looking at the pattern pieces, um, I don't think it's going to be crazy at all. I mean, the buttons, I think everybody, nobody really likes doing buttons. If you like doing buttons, please send me a private message so I can start sending you all my button work from now on. <laughs> but um, I mean, other than the buttons, it is a fully lined coat. I will say that. And so I think maybe that's kind of what's a little intimidating to me as well. When I see something that's fully lined, I kind of like, <gasps> because it's, um, it takes a lot of fabric, first of all, right? It's a huge coat to begin with. It's got this gorgeous, gorgeous skirt. Um, but then to line it too, it's like, uh, but 100% worth it. Like, I am so excited to sew this up because um, what's really great is you can kind of mix and match the lining and the outer fabric that you use, depending on the um, temperature that you're going for. So if you are, you know, outside, or if you live someplace where it's usually pretty cold um, during the winter and fall, I really recommend um, doing wool and then maybe lining with just like some broadcloth or something, um, something a little bit lighter, but it will still help keep that, fat, uh, keep the heat in. Um, I, th I think wool would be like the best to do, but here where I live, it does not get cold. <laughs> like right now it's 70 degrees out and it's January 14th. So it doesn't get cold here. Um, so I'm actually going to use some bullet fabric where um, it's got a little bit extra, you know, it's got, it's thicker fabric, but not too thick where wool will just kind of keep hold your heat in. This will kind of let it breathe a little bit. And then I'm going to use just some cotton broadcloth for my lining so that it's nice and light and I can wear it spring, fall, winter, um, so I'm really excited about this because it is going to be the cutest, best coat. <laughs> I've never made a coat before. Outerwear I've not worked on. Um, I've made like a shacket and that was really awesome. And I think this is kind of similar. It's just got a bigger, it's got a skirt, <laughs> a skirted bottom. So I'm really, really excited about this. Okay. Now that I've spent two minutes going on about how excited I am, <laughs> let's get into, um, the schedule for this so long is going to be kind of like last week where we're going to do a full five days um, just because there are quite a few pieces with the lining and I want to make sure that we um, aren't overwhelmed with all the work. So today is day one. We're going to be um, printing and prepping our patterns and cutting our fabric. I really, really, really recommend that you cut your fabric today because um, I'll just say, I just spent two hours cutting mine out and I'm usually a pretty fast cutter, but because the skirt pieces are so big and then you have to cut mirror and you have to really pay close attention to, um, to some of those things because you've got you've to gotta cut mirror. If you need to add length, there's different places that you need to add length in if you need a full bust adjustment. Um, so really take your time and focus on um, how you're cutting it. Um, but let's first, before we get into that, let's first talk a little bit about pattern prep. I just like to do this each, um, each so long, just so that in case you've, you missed, this is your first one with this. Um, I just want you to see kind of what I see and, um, get some tips about what I like to do. Okay, so the very first thing I want to talk about is here in your pattern, you see all these different lines. These are all the different sizes that you have. And printing it out like this can get overwhelming, especially if you're only planning on making one size or, um, you know, you want to make a bunch of different sizes, but just all these lines are pretty overwhelming. If you come over to the left hand side here of your screen, you'll see these stacked papers. And if you click on that, and click this drop down here, you'll see all the different sizes here. And by unchecking them, you will get rid of all the sizes that you don't need. And now instead of all those crazy lines, drawing your attention, if you're like me, like, I'm like, a, I see something shiny and I, I get distracted. So instead of all these crazy lines drawing your attention, you have just the size you need. 
Um, another thing that I like to do with these sometimes is if I know it's going to be a pattern I'm going to make a lot of or um, I'm going to make for a bunch of different people, I like to keep all the sizes checked, print out a master copy, and then I will um, go through and use tracing paper or um, I actually use medical paper, the stuff that's on the doctor's office tables, um, to trace out the size that I need and then use that as my pattern. That way I'm not printing out, you know, 10, 12 different patterns for every single size. So with that being said, so those are the layers for your pattern here. And then my next recommendation is that before you print out the whole pattern, because it's 50, let me do some quick math here, 55 pages. That's quite a lot of pages to print out and then to find out that it's printed at the wrong scale. So what I always, always, always recommend is that you first print out this first page. So you're going to come to page 43. And then you're going to make sure the actual size is checked. You don't want fit because if you notice now everything's kind of a little bit smaller. Same with shrink oversized pages. You just want it at actual size. And what's going to happen then is you're going to print out this page. And here you'll see this one inch box or four centimeters if you are metric and you are every single time I recommend checking this one inch box these test box to boxes to make sure that they are printing at the ac accurate size before you print out the whole thing because if you print 55 pages and it's even just a quarter inch off your whole garment isn't going to fit correctly and it's really really important that you've got the correct sizes going so I really recommend testing, print the first page and test this square before you do anything else. Um, next thing I want to quick talk about is there is a projector file. With the projector file, you'll notice some of these pieces, if you're in a bigger size range, they're just so big. They don't fit in your projected space. Um, and what I recommend doing for those is, let me pull that back up really quick. Okay. So you're going to line it up so that your fabric, <clears throat> pardon me, is on it. You're gonna cut the pieces that you can see, and then you're gonna make a little notch or mark somewhere. So you'll pick a focal point on the pattern. I usually like to pick like a corner, and what you'll do is you'll then move your pattern piece up until you just see that corner. And then you'll slide your fabric up. Make sure that it's lining up perfectly and that you slide it evenly. Um, using pattern weights while you do this is really, 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 really important. Um, that way you're not having pulling. The pattern weights kind of help keep it pretty even. And then again, you'll want to do it, mark another space. Or even better, and I know being a projector user, hearing this is like a stab in the gut. But um, even better would be to just project it onto your table and trace it and use that pattern piece. Um, just because you do have to do mirrored and you have to do lining and it can get, I think that's what took me so long as I did it through the projector. So I was doing a lot of adjusting pieces and adjusting fabric and re, you know, making sure everything was lined up properly. and. It adds a lot, a lot of time to cutting. So I really recommend just tracing that piece, those skirt pieces. I know, I know it's a bummer, but trust me, it's really, really good thing to do. Okay, so that's it for pa the pattern prep. Oh, my throat's really dry. The next thing I want to talk about is you do need quite a few pieces um, just because you need outer pieces and um, liner pieces. Make sure you pay attention because your outer pieces need to be cut um, the same way and then your for your bodice and then your liner pieces need to be cut mirror image. So um, make sure you pay attention to that if you're using a, um, a fabric that's got, you know, like broadcloth doesn't really have a right and wrong side. In my eyes, I'm like, whatever, it's the same either way. Um, I'm sure if you were to get super technical, it does. <laughs> but um, 
So just make sure you keep an eye on that, that you flip those, that the liner pieces on the bodice are um, mirror image to your um, outer pieces. And then the next thing too I wanted to point out is um, I don't remember. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I think that was really the biggest thing. Oh, there was one other thing. Um, the back piece, the back bodice piece is cut on the fold. <laughs> I made the mistake of not paying attention to that and then started cutting it just like I did the front pieces and it was like, erg. Um, so definitely keep an eye on that. The nice thing is, is there is a shorten or lengthen line on this pattern. So I always, always, always forget to short, to lengthen patterns when I use them. Um, so having that reminder was really, really nice and helpful for me. Um, so the pattern is drafted for five, five. If you are, um, you're going to add an inch or half an inch for every inch that you are over five, five. So I'm five, seven. So I added an inch to my pattern pieces. If you are shorter than five, five, you're going to take away half an inch for every inch you are. So if you're five, three, you're going to take an inch away. Um, and then all you have to do, there's a really good tutorial about um, height to shorten lengthen and also a full bust adjustment if you need that in the pattern just um in the pattern right under right above sorry the um the pattern pieces on the pdf file so if you need help with that i'd really recommend checking that out other words i mean to shorten and lengthen it's not too crazy unless you also need to shorten and lengthen um your shoulder pieces but it all explains that in the pattern really really well but um the last thing I wanted to point out is the sleeve lining. You need to make sure you cut that an inch shorter than your actual sleeve pieces because your sleeve is going to be, the outer sleeve piece is gonna tuck in and that's gonna create your hem and the sleeve lining is gonna pull that in. So if your sleeve line, lining is um, the same length as your sleeve, you're not gonna get that nice fold over hem. You're gonna get just a piece that kind of, um, meets in the middle and it's not going to look quite as finished and nice. Um, you will need a small amount of interfacing and you will need some one inch buttons as well. Um, other than that, it's, it's not, it's not a crazy cut. I just really, really recommend that you make a list and kind of mark things off as you go. I always, always, <laughs> always do that when I'm sewing anyways, because I, 90% of the time, if I don't, I forget something. But um, other than that, I'm excited. I'm excited to see um, the fabrics that you picked. I'm excited to see everybody's coats. I'm excited to get this done. I seriously have loved this pattern for so long. And it's one of those ones that I look at and I keep going, oh, I wish. But then I think, why do I have to wish? I can do it. I There's probably, there's nothing holding me back but myself. So I believe that you can do this as well. The only thing holding you back is you and your concern about not being able to do it. I know it's a big fabric commitment. Um, if that's something you're worried about, just do go to Walmart, get some cheap fabric and do a tester out of it to check fit and everything. Just know though that that's not going to be the same quality that you're going to want for your final garment. So if you test it, you put it on and you're like, oh, this is terrible. I don't like the look of this. It's because the fabric isn't the best quality. Um, I mean, you might make one and it looks great. It kind of depends again on um, stretch and the fabric quality. But I just, I really recommend um, if you make something with subpar fabric, don't just write that pattern off or don't write yourself off. Um, a lot of times when I find that I've made a garment that I don't like, I go back in with a different fabric or, um, you know, a different technique, and it completely changes the sew. So please don't think that if you're making a muslin and it doesn't fit correctly, that you're not going to want to waste your good fabric, because that's not, that's not what's going to happen, if that makes sense. Um, make your muslin, understand that it's muslin, that it's not going to, you're more 
testing the fit more than anything else. Not how flattering it is, not how good you look in it. You're just seeing, okay, yep, the arms feel good. The length is good. The width is good. You know, that's what you're checking with a muslin. You're not checking to see how it looks on you. Um, so don't, if you're using, you know, Walmart fabric and you're like, you put it on and it fits really, really good, but you don't like the look of it. Don't write that off as you making a mistake or the pattern being wrong. Just write it off as this wasn't the right, the correct kind of fabric for this and then take that and learn from it. So, you know, like, okay, I need to make sure if I want to use Walmart fabric again, that I get one with less stretch or one with more stretch, or, you know, I'm going to look at maybe a different shop or order something else and try stepping up from there before I get into the really fancy wool. Um, even just taking um, like a wool blanket or something, you know, stepping up to those nicer fabrics is totally fine. And I'm not saying that you have to have nice fabrics to create a nice garment. I'm just trying to say like, please don't give up on it. <laughs> don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on the pattern. If it's something that you really love, keep going, keep trying, try different things, change little things. And you're going to, you're going to get it. I promise. But this one is not going to be hard. <laughs> I don't, I went on this ramp, this like, tan, like side, whatever about don't give up, but I hope I did not intimidate you because this is not like that. Um, I'm just trying to say if you're, if you're using, um, if you're making a muslin, don't get upset if you don't like the way it looks. Okay. <laughs> with that being said, um, I'm really, really excited to slow this up with y'all. I know, like I've said before, I know it looks intimidating. Really, it's just, it's a gorgeous coat. And I think that's what intimidates me the most is I look at everybody else's creations and I'm like, that's gorgeous. Um, but there's no reason why we can't make it. It's not, the instructions are great. The pattern is great. Um, so there's no reason we can't do it too. So I'm excited to get into it. I'm excited to do this. I can't wait. I, I'm seriously super excited to see everybody's makes because y'all inspire me every single week with everything that you make. So I'm really excited to see your Duchess coats because I love them. I love seeing them. I love admiring them. And now I'm going to have my own that I'm going to love to wear. <laughs> and you are too. Yay! Um, anyways, so tomorrow we are going to um, we're going to actually construct the bodice. We're going to be constructing the outer and the inner part of the bodice. And we're also going to be putting the darts in our fabric pieces. So we'll be doing the darts and then constructing the bodice. And then um, on day three of our sew along, we'll be making the skirt, attaching the pockets, and then attaching the, the bodice to the skirt. We won't be attaching the liner to the outer yet, but we'll just kind of, we'll be creating the two different parts so that we can attach them. Um, on day four, we'll attach the liner and the outer fabric, and then we'll attach our collar piece as well. And then on day five, we'll put in our buttons and we'll do our belt and then we'll be done. Yay! I'm super excited about this and I cannot wait to see what y'all create. So I will see you tomorrow where we will be starting to sew up our Duchess coat. Bye!